Hello friends, uh, Jeff here and welcome to Squadron, welcome to Squadron Facebook Live. Yep, another week passed and here we are, 12 o'clock central. And uh, it's a beautiful day outside. Uh, it's hard to believe it's winter. Uh, tomorrow it's going to be like 75, so I can't, uh, I can't wait to get out of here and uh, just uh, enjoy the weekend. Uh, but before I do that, I would like to talk, or the topic of the day uh, is uh, putty. Now I'm not talking about the regular putty, the one that you use as a filler where you have to wear uh, when you have a seam and you have to fill it up and sand it. No, I'm talking about milliput or epoxy putty. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> anxiety out there uh, of people that, uh, I get questions all the time like, Jeff, how do you make this or how do you make that? And how do you handle putty? Uh, because you can actually uh, make a lot of good stuff with putty if you know how to handle it. It's all about the manipulation of putty and a couple, there's a couple, not secrets, but a couple tricks to it. And uh, also, by the way, um, if you're tuned in right now and you have a question, or any model related question, but especially about putty, I hope, uh, just feel, please uh, feel free to ask and, and I'll try to answer that. But going back to the basics with putty, you know, the it used to be when I worked for Linden about 30, 30 some years ago, uh, he had a lot of sculptors that made figures. You know, they, 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 uh, they, they there's like five or 10 sculptors he had working basically around the clock and he came out with about, about 15, 20 figures uh, a month. So, and they were all handmade. They were all made out of putty. 95% were made out of, out of milliput. And um, so I was exposed to that and it intrigued me because I really wanted to do that too. And, I would like, I would have, back then, I, I really liked to uh, make a figure, and I, and I made a few back then, not all that great, but uh, at least I tried, and, uh, but I was, I was so captivated what you could do with milliput, but I didn't know any better, and uh, so, you know, I started mixing it up, and then I had a little uh, a jar of water, and I dipped my fingers in there, and I started uh, try to mold it, but then it became a mess because, as you all well know, uh, if you're familiar with milliput, that once you get some water in the mix, it starts to uh, really uh, dissolve a little bit, and you get. I mean, I got milliput all over my, my my hands, my pants, my shirt, my face, in my in my nose, even licking licking my brush. I mean, it was horrible. So, but that was the only way I knew just to get a little bit of work done. So one time, one of the sculptors came over, and I think it was, uh, if I remember correctly, and Willie Peters, if he's watching, uh, he, will, he will remember the guy. His, his name was Julian Hollis. And he was one of the most uh, prolific uh, sculptors of back then, maybe still is, uh, I don't know, but I, I lost uh, contact with that. But about 25, 30 years ago, he was one of the main sculptors for Verlinden who made, started to make all these 116 uh, scale figures. So at one time, uh, he, he flew over, he was from England, and uh, he spent a couple of days with the Verlinden uh, family and uh, he also was walking around in the building there. And so I sat at my desk and I was still messing with the milliput, you know, the, the, the water right running my sleeve and, and out my pants. I mean, I was just, so I see him coming on, uh, in, in the corner of my eye and I started shaking because I knew but the, the guy was a professional. I was just a, an amateur and I was like, like trying to, to make something. I don't know what I was making, probably a tarp or a bedroll or a rucksack or something. So he comes over and he's steering his coffee and he looks over uh, my shoulder and he said, what the heck are you doing? And so I looked up, I said, well, I'm trying to make something. And he said, no, 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 no. You can't do this uh, with water. You have to use talcum powder. And I said, what, a talcum powder? Now back then, I was a lot stupider than I am now. Uh, I'm still stupid, but back then it, I, it was just uh, just amazing how, how dumb I was. And I, I didn't want to believe it because it didn't connect. How can you use milliput and talcum powder? But it's like a baker's dough. When a baker makes a bread, and he puts sprinkles flour on it, and it has a, a couple uh, advantages. And one of them is it won't stick to his hand. And this is, how I learned to work with milliput, and he showed me a couple tricks, and a whole new world uh, opened up for me. So, coming back to this session now, I am going to show you a little, a couple tricks. I can't do it uh, in uh, in detail because Facebook Live doesn't really lend itself to really get up uh, close and personal. But we can move the uh, the camera a little bit closer, and Nicole, uh, uh, once I sit there, maybe you can come and tilt it a little bit. Uh, and but I can at least show you. Uh, 
uh, what to use or what to do, what not to do, a couple tools, very simple. And uh, maybe um, you, can, um, you can try it at cell because working with milliput, milliput or epoxy putty, in this case, it's all about trial and error. Don't give up, just try to do it and every time you get a little bit better. So let me swing around the table here and uh, uh, then we go from there. Um, is there any questions? No questions, but we have a couple of shout outs. Uh, we have hellos from Susan Garrison Letterman. Oh yeah, hey Susan. I uh, hope everything is well on your end. Uh, say hi to Bob, please. We have uh, David M, Gary K, William L, and Harold L. So Hello guys, far. Uh, thanks for tuning in again. Uh, hopefully uh, I'll be able to teach you something today. Again, this is my view on it. Maybe I'll do a couple things that maybe will look stupid or uh, out of this world, but at least it works for me. So let's, uh, let me uh, take a seat here. <clears throat> okay, you think that will work if you... Yeah, just bear with me one moment here. There we go. All right. Now, first of all, uh, we talk about milliput, and uh, I use uh, epoxy putty. Milliput is very good, and if you have milliput and you're familiar with it, uh, please continue to work with it. Uh, epoxy sculpt, actually from Avis. To me, you get a little bit more uh, value for money. Uh, it also doesn't dry as much than milliput does, because uh, if you're familiar with milliput, sometimes uh, if you put it away for a little bit and you get it back, you open it back up, uh, it has a crust and you have to cut that off. That's another thing. If you have a crust, uh, even on this one or on the milliput, uh, always cut that off because there is no way that that thing will mix in with the rest. So another thing is, and I'll show you that, uh, if you wanna make tarps or any belts or whatever, you have to roll it flat. So it's, good, it's always good to have a little PVC pipe, like a plumbing pipe uh, next to it, or a little bottle. Uh, here, as long as it's smooth and it's round and, and it's hard, I shouldn't say that, but anyway, uh, that's, uh, that, uh, that will work. And for the beer drinkers, uh, you know, if you have a beer bottle on your table, uh, it has a purpose. So uh, a little bit of water, a little tiny bit of water. Um, then there are some, some sculpting tools and you can find those on our website. Uh, you don't have to go and, and buy 200 of them, but a couple things like a couple sharp, sharp ones, a couple, couple sculpting tools uh, are very uh, uh, necessary to have on your workbench. And of course a knife, a yeah, scalpel. Uh, if you have one of those uh, box cutter knives, that would be good too, because sometimes you have to cut bigger pieces from, from, a, from a square. So if you find something that maybe is this long would even be better, but uh, I use like just a blade of a box cutter and a, a brush, like a fine to mid fine brush. It doesn't have to be a triple zero, but like everything between a zero and a, and a number one or two uh, should do fine. And last but not least, talcum powder. I sprinkled a couple things in a, in a box here, but uh, talcum powder is the most important ingredient. And it can be any talcum powder. You, know, you find it at Walmart or the dollar store. Don't go all the way. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to smell. Just regular talcum powder. So let's do uh, a couple things. <clears throat> First of all, let's uh, see how uh, we, uh, we make a, maybe a tarp. That's the easiest way. So let me get some, some stuff out of here. Let me mix enough. We have a couple more hellos while you're pulling some out. Sure. Uh, we have Jerry H. Hey, Jerry. Kel W. Robert C. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Probably all of the regulars from... Sure are. All names I certainly recognize. Oh, okay. All right, so <clears throat> no secret here. You mix a little bit 50-50. You take out my, my wedding ring. I hope my wife's not looking. I guess I don't want to do that. Okay. So make sure you get a, a uniform color. Now this is... This is dark milliput or epoxy putty. Uh, it doesn't matter, they have it in all, uh, in all different sizes and colors. So it turned out when I ordered this one that it was a little darker than I wanted, but it'll do the trick. It's the same thing, it's just a color. Uh, also, <coughs> this is a piece of plastic sheet. 
you can you can use whatever uh, you want uh, sometimes you can use even a cutting mat but a cutting mat uh, in some cases it's a little pebbled you know and it will it will print uh, in your tarp so i like this to be uh, really uh, flush and uh, and smooth so a, a piece of plastic sheet is always handy okay and again guys uh, if you have questions uh, let me know and all, i'm sure they're all focused on what i'm doing right here and they're speechless it is amazing to behold oh um, more shout outs from Vernon P. Hello, Bob Vernon. D. Mark H. and Patrick M. All right, guys. Okay, so now we have a little sausage here. So I'm going to put some on the side uh, for, for a demonstration. Maybe making something else. So, first of all, what I always do, and uh, I just roll it in there. Now, the most important thing is you cannot. Uh, mix it back up now sometimes when you make a mistake you can do it maybe once or twice that you can uh, put everything back together roll it into a ball again but the more talcum powder uh, you mix into the blend here uh, the, the sooner it's going to be dissolved because eventually the talcum powder will prevent uh, that the milliput stays stays basically tacky and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's it, basically it's going to break up if you mix too much uh, talcum powder into the into the mix here, then it's gonna break up and then it doesn't work anymore. So as long as you stay on the outside, it's fine. So okay, so here and let's say that we make some sort of a a little canvas to hang over here. I'm just gonna drape something. So first of all, you take your little little pipe or the bottle. And always, always make sure that you keep working it and, and try to uh, make us uh, try to use as much talcum powder as, as possible without making a mess. And see, it, it, it already begins to uh, too big already. So I'm gonna cut a piece off and then work on this. We have a suggestion from a couple of our watchers, actually. Uh, Harold, David, and Abraham mm -hmm. says instead of using the plastic sheet, they use glass. Oh, glass is fine. Uh, it's actually even better because uh, that will last longer. And uh, it's, uh, I think you can clean it up a little bit. Even ceramic will work as long as it's flush and smooth. Now, there's also, and that's all, of, all about feeling, you know, because you can see I already have the stuff here going on. The thinner you make it, the better. And in, at this particular, I can't do it right now because we have to do this in one session. But at this particular uh, point, I usually stop a little bit and put it, put it on the side for about five, 10 minutes. Now, uh, because of the chemical reaction that's going on right now, uh, it starts the hardening process, the setting process is already uh, in motion. But you have to find, in a way, the, uh, the, 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 the fine spot, the, 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 how do you call that? The sweet spot. The, the what? The sweet, the sweet spot. spot, yes. Uh, when, when it's like, uh, uh, it's not hard enough, but it's, uh, it, it just, it's, it's not soft either. It's, you know, it's in between. And uh, so, it will work better and it won't stick as much as, as you want to because you can already see that if you do it, press it too hard. Uh, so if I would put this away for about uh, five, 10 minutes, it would be absolutely perfect. You can still roll it. You can still make it uh, a lot uh, thinner than you want because the thinner it is, the better, uh, depending what you're doing. So I'm gonna do it one more time and always add talcum powder so it doesn't really stick. We do have one question. Mm -hmm. um, does the color indicate whether the grain uh, is coarse or fine? Uh, no, it's it's just a matter of, uh, in the milliput, in the milliput uh, range, the the brand milliput. There are there is uh, you get white, uh, like the white color, and and sometimes it says uh, 
medium or super fine. But in the epoxy, uh, it's all the same. It's just a different color that, that, uh, that you use. But generally speaking, even with the fine milliput and the regular milliput, there is not much difference. So any milliput you, uh, or epoxy you buy uh, should do the trick. So, okay, so let's say that uh, we're gonna make a little tarp to drape over it again get like a straight edge and the thinner you make it the better depending what you're doing so now we have uh, a little canvas here and this is where the brush and the water comes in <clears throat> because if you want to do something uh, on your model you want it to stick and since the talcum powder is in place, it won't stick anymore because the talcum powder prevents it from being sticky. So what you do, you, uh, you pick it up uh, uh, with your brush and then you just uh, basically drape it over where you want it to drape. And it might be wise to moisten the, uh, the bottom here just to get it some extra grip. Also, like I mentioned before, if you, if you let it lay there uh, maybe five or 10 minutes before you do this, then uh, you have a lot less, less chance to leave fingerprints because you, you can't just pick that up. That's why you need the brush because once you, you pick it up, you're gonna have fingerprints on there and you, want, you don't want that. So now you just use water to manipulate it. Now you can, you can make all kind of uh, All kind of I'm trying to get it underneath here just to I think you you get where I'm going with this and the nice thing is it all will stay in place so I'm just gonna make a little And the, the thinner you make it, is, is that in view because I can't see? Uh, I guess so. Yeah, let me. Uh, the thinner you make it, the, the more uh, things you can do with it, the more folds you can create, and uh, it stays in place. And now you, you basically don't have to do anything. You, you, you just uh, wait until it's dry. And even if you want to pop it off, like I said, you, 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 let's say that you, you don't want it on there you want to uh, paint your your armor piece first once it's dry 90% you can just pop it off and then later put it back in place and it has exactly the shape that you want to so that's one the second time the second thing is let's say you would like to make uh, belts uh, on a you have like an ejection seat that you have and you want to put a couple belts on there well basically it's the same principle let's put some more talcum powder on there while you're doing that, we do have a, a question. Mm -hmm. What model are you working in? What model? This one? Oh, yeah. Oh, this? I have no clue. Uh, it's a Russian BTR something, but uh, this was some leftover uh, pieces I found. I stole them from Richard's desk, so hopefully he's <laughs> not watching. But I took this. I, I think it's a, it's a Hobby Boss BTR something, some Russian kind of a, a post-war... Post Cold War vehicle, so, but uh, I honestly don't know. I, I only know it's Russian and it has wheels. Will it be permanently attached or can you remove it when it's dry? Oh yeah, yeah, you can remove it. Like I said, uh, if, you don't, <clears throat> if you don't touch it anymore and it dries up, uh, it, will, it will be fine, it will stay on there. But if you say, okay, I would like to remove it because I wanna paint my vehicle first, you just have to uh, uh, lift it off and it will snap off without breaking and then you can paint your vehicle and then just push it back in place because uh, it will accept the, uh, the shape that it's, uh, that it's on. So it, it, it's just a, a, a perfect fit. How long does it take to fully dry or cure? That's a, that's a good question. Uh, it usually, you can speed it up a little bit. <clears throat> Let's say they used to have a, a little, they used to have a little, these little ovens, you know, like, and uh, it's like a table desk oven like a baker's oven it's like this this big and this you can put it in there for about 
maybe a couple of minutes, five, five, ten minutes. Yeah, of course, you have to uh, you have to be careful that you don't melt your plastic. But generally speaking, if you don't have anything, uh, or you put it on a, maybe on a little uh, uh, like a heater kind of a thing, a uh, radiator or something. To be completely dry, I would say about several hours, like three, four hours if it's completely dry. But the, the danger uh, of bumping into something or leaving an imprint or damaging it, that pretty well goes away after 20, 30 minutes. After 20, 30 minutes, there is not much you can do anymore uh, and it will stay in the shape it is. But to completely hard, harden out until you can uh, uh, sand it, that will take uh, four to six hours, if not longer. Uh, Jerry Hendrickson says you can also use a hair dryer. Yes, you can. That's uh, actually that may be a better uh, a better way to speed it up a little. Uh, hair dryer will work. Anything anything that has a, a, a source of of heat, uh, just make sure that it's not too hot that it melts the plastic. So okay, let's say that we have to apply like a seat belt. I'm just gonna do one. And again, guys, this is all trial and error. It might seem, I mean, it's, it is simple. You just, you just have to be in the beginning a little careful that you don't uh, speed it up or you have to be patient. And I can tell you right now, if you didn't use Milliput or if you didn't try to use Milliput, uh, the first couple tryouts might be a disappointment because that's the way it is. But every time you do something and you ruin it and you start over, luckily it's it's pretty cheap to, uh, and, and you can immediately start over with something else. But once you, you, you did something wrong, you won't do it the next time anymore. And it's all about patience. Patience and uh, respecting the dry time. Like I said, uh, it's better to do this, uh, to roll everything out and put it away for five, 10 minutes. So. Uh, it's not as susceptible anymore for fingerprinting and it doesn't stick as and it, it's a lot better uh, You can handle it a lot better than uh, than you freshly done it. So, okay, let's uh, Cut like uh, a piece off here I got my glasses so I can't see So again, let's pretend that this is a seat belt Pick it up and uh, you try to lay it on there. Once it's on there, it's okay. It's just to getting it. Okay, here we go. And actually, the, the, when when you uh, put it in place with your with your brush, you can you can really drape this thing uh, very realistically. And there is a lot of photo etch out there. There is, a, there is a, the people work like to work with lead foil, but I prefer this because the good thing about this, uh, with photo etch, with, uh, with with lead foil, you still have to use super glue uh, to to attach it. Here you don't have to do anything. You just have to lay it on there, uh, moisten it a little, and uh, it uh, it will it will stay there. And eventually, when when you put paint on it. When you put paint on it, then it, it will secure it for sure. So uh, this is very, very, very easy to do. Uh, it just takes a little patience and it takes a little bit trial and error in the beginning. But after you do this a few times, then you can already make sure, or already uh, you're gonna be sure that you, you, you're gonna pull it off. The same thing while we have this laid out here. Uh, let's say that uh, you wanna make like a, a bedroll. You wanna do something, uh, like a tent pack or a bedroll, you put that on your vehicle. Uh, the same principle. Let's uh, let's maybe add a little bit more so I can make it a little bit bigger. All right. It's also very important to have like a razor like this because you want to have sharp edges. So let's now, let's set, just simulate like a, a bedroll. So again, we start to roll it up like a, like a real one. And 
And there you go. And now, let's say that this is, uh, now these things come in handy. And you're looking for a fine point. For the longest time, I used an old needle of, a, of an airbrush, you know, the long needle. And uh, I, I still use it, but that's what I, I always use. But uh, they have these tools, it's like dental tools. And uh, you can easily make, make impressions with it. say that you have to That's why it's, it's a little bit more difficult when the, the milliput is still fresh. Uh, because if you use too much water, it will, it will start to really not break up, but getting a little bit too soft. And so it's better to wait a little bit until you get more grip at anything. I think you get the picture, uh, what you can do with it. This is okay. I need to. There's something in the middle here. And then you can, with this, you can push some extra pleats in there. And the brush also will, if you have some sharp edges around when you when you push your metal uh, pick in there, uh, when you when you uh, do that and you have some some, the edges are a little bit too sharp or too rough, you just blend it with your with your brush, like make it moisten it a little bit and just blend it until it fades out. And then if you want to do some extra, let's say you have, you want to make a cable or a, or a rope, it's the same thing. Put that on the side a little bit. It's the same thing you can make. That's another thing. Sometimes when you have to attach copper wire to your tank, like for a cable from a, um, like a, a headlight or from an antenna, uh, you always have to manipulate this. And, and especially in aircraft building, if you want to do some wiring in your cockpit uh, and you super detail the cockpit and then you have to apply some copper wire or lead wire or whatever. Uh, you always have to do that with almost with super glue and it's always very risky. So with this, in this case, you just start rolling it like this. Uh, one of our viewers, Gary, says he's used putty to sculpt Zimmerit on oh, yeah. German armor. The sky is the limit. Uh, and Zimmerit is the same thing. You apply it. I usually do that like this. I make long strips of, of very thin one and I apply it on the shape. Let's say you have a panther and you just uh, lay it on there, like this. Yeah, do this. Maybe I can do. I can show that a little later. Uh, let me finish the wire here. And you can make this as thin as possible. Always make it a little smaller because And again, sometimes you have to make five to get two good ones. As with any craft, practice yeah, is true. Practice is key. So let's say that this is the, the thickness that you desire. Same thing, pick it up and just lay it on there and you can, you can, you can almost uh, 
lay it in any shape you want to without having to glue it. You can, like I said, you can do anything what you want, and it, and it, and it looks really realistic when it's on there. Uh, you get this, this, I don't know if you can see this, but you can manipulate it in any, and you just have to wait until it's dry and it's attached. And this is very good for, uh, this is very good for cockpit building. I mean, if you uh, scratch build a cockpit and you have to do a lot of wiring there, but you don't want to use a lot of glue or any glue, then this is the way to go. So uh, let's bring up the thing of Milliput, I mean of uh, Zimmerit. Same thing, let's make it a little thinner here. I'm already making a mess. We have another hello from William B. Hello, William. Thanks for tuning in. And Bob D has suggested making aircraft identification panels and flags. You can do any, anything. Like I said, you can almost make anything you want out of Milliput. Just like this morning, I've been uh, fiddling around with it and uh, I just made, made this. Just I was just playing with it and uh, I made some like a tent or a tarp with some metal bars so it's simulating the tent poles. But uh, it took me about about 15, 20 minutes to, to do so and, and it, looks, <laughs> it looks really, really realistic. Uh, I prefer it over anything. And, and, it, and it, it really is worthwhile, it is really worthwhile to investigate in this. If you, I mean, if you really, really uh, think about scratch building and doing something different, uh, it is very rewarding that you get this, I mean, that you learn this technique and you can do, you can do almost anything or make anything out of milliput, uh, as long as it concerns like, like tarp or, rock or uh, backpacks, bedrolls, ropes, cables, uh, all kind of harness stuff, uh, seat belts, you can all make this and it looks very, very realistic. So let's say that uh, we'll apply a little Zimmerit on here. Abraham has also suggested another use for your straight edge or an exacto saw uh, to imprint a sewn edge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing you can, you can make imprints in this too. Uh, so the good thing is here, like for instance, you can cut all the excess off. I don't know if I can. Mark Saperstein also says hello. Hey, Mark. He's joined in. Glad you joined us. All right, let's, because uh, I was just uh, doing this for simulating purposes. Let's say that you, you have your whole tank uh, lined up here. And now you just have to, I don't know if I, I didn't, I should have thought about that, but anyway, I think you, you get the, uh, the whole idea about Zimmerit, so, then you just make a tool. You you make like a little, I, I usually make it out of strip, plastic strip, and I make it the right size, and I bevel it a little bit. And there are some, uh, there are some tools out there, like pre-made tools, I think Tamiya has some, I think a couple other companies bring it out. But uh, honestly, you, you don't even need that. You can easily make it yourself from plastic strip. So you, you, you get a, a little bit of plastic strip of plastic sheet, you cut it to the desired uh, dimensions, and then you bevel it a little on, on top and then you just dip it into the into the talcum powder and you start you just start to making impressions just like oh, this is not working 100 percent because it's rounded but i think you get the the idea I don't know if you can see this. 
So it's very, also the, we have all kinds of zimmerit. Uh, so let's say that the one with the, like you see it on Panthers a lot, uh, just the squares. I mean, it just, uh, I can't see, I have to do it, uh, but you can't, uh, you can't see what I, I mean, you know what I mean. So it's a very good, actually, uh, talking about Zimmerit, uh, to me, th that's the preferable way to go. Uh, because they sell photo -ish, they sell paper uh, Zimmerit. Sometimes they even have it already embossed in, in onto the kit. But uh, I like, I like the, uh, uh, the uh, the milliput version of the milliput. So thanks for, uh, for bringing that up because I didn't even think about that. So, but that's about that's about it. What you can do. There is a lot more that uh, I, I could explain or I could uh, I could uh, show you. But I think we have on our YouTube channel, maybe not YouTube channel, on our uh, website. Uh, there is uh, the Squadron Minute, and I think I did a couple of videos, at least one I remember about this, and more in depth what you could do with it. But Honestly, guys, the principle is just uh, you just have to try it, you know, and, and not be discouraged because, like I said, if you never worked with this and you're not familiar, it will take you uh, a, a few trials and, and a lot of errors before you get the hang of it. But once you understand the principle of milliput, once you understand uh, how it works, what you can do with it, then the sky's the limit. You can, you can almost make anything. We do have one more question. What mm -hmm. is the purpose of Zimmerit? Well, Zimmerit, uh, the Germans back then, and especially in, in Russia, there were a lot of magnetic mines. So the Russians, they very early on, they, they thought like, okay, if we can get close enough to the tank, we have like a magnetic uh, mine or a bomb, and they just stuck it onto the tank. So they run up to the tank and uh, stuck it on there. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it, it explodes and uh, disastrous outcome. So the Russians said, if we do some sort of a concrete, because Zimmerit is basically a concrete mix, if we can apply a layer over the whole tank or the whole uh, chassis, and we can do it uh, with, uh, with uh, concrete, then the mines won't stick. So it, whatever they threw out there or whatever they tried to stuck on there, it wouldn't hold. So that's why, that's the only reason. It's, an, it's a basically an anti-mine layer, an anti-magnetic layer. So all right, I've, I think we. Oh my, my God, we're already over. Uh, so uh, let's go on with the uh, with the drawing of uh, last week's uh, last week's drawing. Uh, again, for the ones that just tuned in or don't know how the thing works, uh, if you're tuned in and you leave a comment either now or later on when you go back or uh, when you see this later on the day or later on the week. Please leave a comment in the comment section and that will make you eligible to, uh, uh, to participate in our drawing that we do every week. And uh, let me see, yeah. This drawing is for this uh, uh, trumpeter tank, the, the BMT, BMPT Kazakhstan Army. Uh, everybody wants the Kazakhstan Army in their collection. So, uh, okay. Uh, Nicole, do the honors. see what we have here and the winner is Mark Nyans and I think Mark I think you're from Belgium so uh, if you see this please uh, contact our customer service or I'll leave us an email with your address and we'll get this thing up to you uh, as soon as possible and I'm sure you're very happy to win a tank from the Kazakhstan army so uh, Okay, let's put that here so I don't forget. For next week's uh, video, uh, I'm sorry, for next week's drawing, we're gonna raffle off this one, the Kitty Hawk uh, uh, UH-1Y, the Huey, the Venom. Uh, so again, leave your comment in the comment section and then uh, you will be eligible next week to win this nice kit. This is actually a very nice kit. So, first of all, let me put my wedding ring back on. And then um, 
As always, uh, please share this with your friends and family. Please visit us on YouTube, on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Share this with your family, share this with your friends. We want to build this uh, channel a lot bigger than it is now. And uh, go to our website on a regular basis at squadron.com. And of course, this week we have uh, this weekend we have a sale. Anything uh, Hobby Boss uh, is 20% off. So if you buy anything Hobby Boss this weekend, it's an uh, it's a 20% off. And uh, on top of that, uh, when you buy a Hobby Boss item, you get uh, the new catalog. So uh, again, this weekend, 20% off on Hobby Boss, plus you will receive a nice catalog. Somebody else? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, then again, uh, wish you uh, a very nice weekend. Um, don't get in trouble. Uh, hopefully, you have nice weather where you live too, but uh, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy it. So please tune in next week uh, at 12 o'clock Central Time. And then we'll see you again and talk about something else. But for now, that was it. Thank you very much for watching. And all the guys who are uh, tuned in, I appreciate it. So I'll see you guys next week. Jeffy here, signing off.